today. Uh, again, we'll go uh, uh, around the uh, around the horn here in a second just to go over some content. I just want to briefly go over what we're going to talk about today uh, for the presentation. It's got to be how to craft your lead magnets that your customers cannot ignore. And I'm sure everybody's uh, uh, looking forward to that, hopefully. Uh, that's why you're here to get some content out of this for director webinar number three. Uh, I am your host, Ryan Sullivan, for that. Frank, and big Frank is here as well, answer man of life. And uh, we'll hopefully get some uh, answers on this topic set and others for your brilliant directories here in today's webinar. So welcome to everybody who's here and everybody who is watching the recording or online. Welcome. So uh, any uh, topic sets that we want to start out with uh, today or questions, uh, anything in the last uh, week since we've talked last? Anybody? Mark, what's up with you? Anything new? Uh, I'm I'm getting there. I'm, I'm working on uh, starting with one ki uh, one county first as far as populating, uh, but uh, I'm trying to clean the data up and all that before I actually do the import. So I'm getting close. Hopefully by next week this time I'll have at least Cuyahoga County imported and I can see you know actual members in their, their listings. So uh, it just takes right. so much time, particularly when you have other things going on too. So right. Yeah, so I mean that that's what I always recommend for uh, uh, people uploading data that you get it uh, straight first, right? Before you put it up in there, I, I think everybody who uploads code or uploads a lot of listings have some snags or whatever. So what I'd recommend doing, and, and Frank is aware of this one, just always uh, for your listing, if you don't have a membership that's specifically made for uploading, uh, I'd go ahead and clone a membership level and just make it the upload membership level. And the reason uh, that I would always do that is because then you can upload into that. It's really easy to siphon off those people because they're not intermingled with the rest of your group. And then you can, uh, when you have that inevitable issue with the list or it doesn't upload properly, you literally just go to that membership level, uh, grab all the, the, the consumers there and delete it, right? And then start from scratch. Uh, but if is if you do that and you add them to, let's say your basic membership level or something, you've already got people in there. Now you import it in there. Now they're all uh, commingled and you can delete them later pretty easy by just uh, sorting by import date or, or, or joined. Uh, but especially if you've already got a, a site that has some users on there, um, you could arbitrarily delete somebody that signed up while you were messing around for the day with your list, right? That signed up and now you delete everybody from today and it had two real people in it and now their their account's gone. So I'd always yeah. make that that test group that you upload to. And then, um, and then once you do, if you um, add them in there and you're ready to go and it looked good and it worked perfect, then you just click all the members and move them to the membership level um, and then uh, you're good to go. So I'm going to go ahead. I'll, I'll actually do that as the, the first uh, real quick uh, demo uh, in here today. I'll go ahead and just kind of show you guys where that's at. I'm not going to actually do it. Yeah. Uh, it's for those people that are, are watching that uh, want to know how to do it. Uh, but hopefully, so hopefully you're doing that. That's great advice, though. That's really good, good advice to put it in that group that you mentioned. And you can always, if you mess up or something gets uh, hosed up, you can you know, delete it out and re-upload. Right. All right. So let me, let me share my screen real quick. Ryan? Yes. You don't have a video of that little tip posted? Um, I don't know that I do, but there will be one of these after I do it right now. So let me, let me demo how to do that real quick. So uh, all you need to do is go to your finance and membership plans. And um, what you want to do is see, I don't have one in here because I didn't do any uploading, but let's just say the uh, the claim listing because that's, let's say I'm going to move everybody to that claim listing spot. All you need to do is clone it, uh, any membership plan that you want. Again, it really doesn't matter what feature sets it has because you're not actually doing anything with this membership plan. You're just going to make a an upload list. So copy whatever you want. Just go ahead and hit edit in there. And then uh, just, just, just label it upload uh test group right or whatever whatever you want uh to make it stand out for you and again it doesn't really matter what any of these other things are because you're just importing them and they're not going to they're not going to do anything so just go ahead and hit save membership that's all you really need to do just just so it's labeled like you want and then once you once you're once you're done with that and you go up to members um uh, then you want to import uh you know, import members. And so what, what you want to do is when you get to the screen where you import members, you can assign the membership plan and then you're going to pick that upload test group for the upload. 
And then that way they're going to upload into that category. And now when you go to that, uh, go back to the membership level. So let's, we'll just assume that we've uploaded into that group. Now, when I go back to the membership levels, there's going to be a bunch of members in this group. So let's say that, that you upload 200. It's going to say 200 members in there. And now let's say it didn't import properly and you just want to delete everybody. This is an easy way to just filter it out. Go, okay, I'm going to click on that. It's going to auto filter to everybody in that group. And let me go back. Let me just do another one. Let's pretend I'm using it uh, with this one. I'm just going to go to one with some people in it. Um, let's, let's do the claim listing. So now there's going to be a bunch of uh, things in here, right? Well, if, if it didn't, uh, if it messed up and you want to delete them, you just literally have to click that, click select all the results and then uh, delete members. And that's it. And then you can get rid of them. Uh, if you do it with the other groups or whatever, or if you've already done that, you can kind of filter by date range. So say I did it last Friday uh, is when I uploaded it. And so you can kind of search those members from that date that you added and kind of parse them out by that. Um, or you can uh, pick uh, an actual account. So if you know you did it in a certain, let's say the membership plan uh, account from this date, you can search for it and then just kind of manually delete everybody. But that's that's how easy it is to cl you know one click on those membership groups to get to all those members and then you can just uh, bulk delete them. And then same thing for all these, let's say these are the six results and now you're good to go, they all look good and you wanna move them to your claim listings. Now you do the same thing, select everybody and then you just select membership plan and hit apply. And then you just pick the whatever one you want to move into. So I'm going to move them to claim listing. You hit yes, continue, and boom, they're all moved over there uh, for your uh, for your use. So very very simple uh, once you have it segmented like that. Does anybody have any questions on that? That's awesome, Ryan. So that's what I recommend doing for everybody. I did have a, a question that's related. Um, to categories, do you establish the categories prior to doing the um, upload, or do you just have the uh, or the import, or do you just have the categories already in the CSV file and upload them that way? Any um, recommendations? Yeah, so uh, you can do it either way. So what what Mark is asking is if you have the Excel spreadsheet and uh, there's two ta two columns on there. One's called profession ID and the other one is services. And the profession ID is the top level category and the services is the sub level category and the sub sub level category this is the same column in the database. So um, the you can do either. Um, so what he's asking is, uh, do I need to create it in the back end first? So top level, and I'm just gonna share my screen while I'm talking on this one as well. Uh, do I need to create the top level uh, and, and sub-level categories first, or do I already do it with the upload? And, and I'll show you what it, what you can do with the upload and what the difference is between those. So option A is you create everything first. You create the top-level categories and the sub-level categories. They're all in here. And then when you go ahead and make the list, um, the profession ID, let's say they're just a directory owner, it would have that title right there, the directory owner in that profession ID column, and it will automatically move them into this top level category, um, just automatically because that uh, profession ID is in there. You also can, in the services category of that list, add uh, DIY app software, accessibility, and so you can, you know, put a comma, uh, at, you know, so if you if you have it in your database like that. It's going to automatically add them to this category, sub-level category, and this sub-level category because you have that in your Excel spreadsheet. So um, you can do the categories first. Just have that info in the spreadsheet, and when you upload them, it'll automatically put them into the, the categories. The other, the other way to do that is you could have no categories, right? It's just an empty database. There are no categories. And now he's saying, I'm just going to add that in there. And you can do that in the... Uh, brand new directory system and inside the uh, imported CSV file, there's an option that says create new member categories if they do not already exist. So the system is smart enough to know what column that is, what's the top level category and what sub level category will automatically make those categories for you. Um, so it, I guess it's uh, potato, potato, except for one item. Um, when it says create new member categories if they do not already exist, it does not know that you maybe want some of those uh, things in the uh, subcategory list to be a sub subcategory because it has no idea. So if you have, going back to the other example, if you have DIY uh, app uh, creator 
and you have uh, accessibility, those are you know the two things separated by a comma, it's gonna assume that those are both subcategories. So it's gonna make a new subcategory of both of those and add it to both and it'll be perfectly fine, except for the point when one of those is actually a sub subcategory. Uh, let's say accessibility was a sub subcategory underneath DIY uh, app builder. It doesn't know that. So it's gonna add it as a subcategory. If you're gonna have sub subcategories, you need to make the categories first because otherwise it's gonna add everything as a subcategory and you're gonna have no way after the fact of changing those categories around. And what I mean by that, and actually BD is gonna come out with an update to this fairly soon, so hopefully this will not be an issue. But if you notice, if you go in the subcategory level here, um, and I don't have any, uh, here's, here's a sub-level category. So this is uh, cold email is the category, the, I'm sorry, top level category was product and service providers. The subcategory was cold email, um, uh, sorry, email marketing is a sub-level, and then this is the sub-sub-level. So I have top-level, sub-level, and, uh, you know, sub-sub-level. But if I if it, if I just added that in the Excel spreadsheet and uploaded it, it would show up like this, where it would show up as cold email, and it would only stick it under the product and services providers. It wouldn't know that that was under email marketing. And once it's in here as a sub-level category, there is no way to just move that like it's not an option here to say, oh, no, just kidding. Uh, that is supposed to be under email marketing. There's no way, you, you notice you can't click it. You can't uh, drag and drop. There's no way to, to tell that. The only way to do that is to delete this thing and then go back in here and, and re-add that sub sub level category under products and services, email marketing, and then type in cold email here, right? But now, but now when I did that, I just broke all the connections between all those clients in that category because I just deleted it and I had to re-add re it back in so it was at the spot where I wanted. Mm -hmm. So does that make sense, everybody? So hope so you can do both, either or, but if you want a sub-sub category, you have to do it first. Otherwise, it'll destroy your category structure and or break those linkages to the people uh, and you won't be, you'll lose a lot of data later. Okay. You say they are looking at doing a fix or working on a fix for that? Yeah, I think they're going to add. Um, I, I think it'll probably be just something simple like, um, like, at, you know, like add a or like here, add a subcategory. I'm not sure how they're going to do it. Like oh. here, add a subcategory, like where I could just say, oh, no kidding. Just make that. They're just going to move it in the, the, the table database under, um, you know, under that new spot. So I don't know how they're going to do it. Maybe it'll be, uh, you know, you click that and you go up here to, um, you know, change categories or something. I'm not sure how they're going to do it, but yeah. Cause, it, cause this is kind of one of the limitations right now. It's just, it's static. You can't, you can make categories, but you can't move them. And, and so it's, it's, it's a part, I mean, a really big oversight, I think. And I think they realize that they're going to, going to update it, but they're kind of set in stone. And so that's why I always tell everybody, um, this is one of the first things you need to do for the directories. You need to get that category structure set up in mm -hmm. advance, at least for now, because it's really hard to move that around later without uh, losing some of the data. Now you can go back in the My in MySQL database and kind of do some Gucci stuff in the background there, and, and hopefully you know you don't change or mess up your your database table structure to get it done. Uh, but there's no easy way in the ba in the structure here of the admin uh, just with drag or drop or any uh, manual process for the normal user to be able to fix that. So, okay, thank you. All right, Frank, you got anything? No, nope. not as far as that goes. All right, uh, Justin, Deborah, Paul. No, I. I think I'm I think I'm set. Um, just something that uh, I wanted to add, a really great resource for populating your database, the small business development centers, they will give you um, everything that you need, categories, business info. I didn't know that until recently. So that's something that might be really neat to get and they don't charge you for it. Oh, cool. Thanks. So, I, I got about 18,000 different businesses uh, in nice. Wyoming, all the contact info, phone numbers, email addresses, business locations. Uh, they can get pretty dang detailed. So that's a really, really good way to, it can be overwhelming. And I don't know if you would actually recommend uploading all of them, but that is one way that you could do it. That is at the local, at the, your own state uh, 
the resource? Uh, yeah, so I'm I'm in Wyoming, and I went to the Small Business Development Center here, and they would only do it for my state. Right, so okay. I'm assuming that there's um, similar setups in other states, but mine's a, mine's a state focused directory also. So perfect. Still maybe Ohio. Yeah. Awesome. <clears throat> Yeah, I forget the I forget the the resource uh, of that um, small business stuff, but yeah, they they basically give you all the uh, the data, you know, for for your local area. Um, it's score I like the score does that a lot too. Uh, it's another entity, the small business uh, area. I'm trying to find the the link here. That's why I'm looking off screen here. Um, but yeah, they'll they'll give you that data. It's probably probably one of the better things that they they provide. It just kind of I would equate it to a library, right? Where they give you they have mm -hmm. access to those uh, all the databases or whatever. You just have to go to the library because they pay for all the stuff through the government, and you can you can tap into that stuff. It's kind of the same thing for the small businesses. Uh, they basically say here here's a thing where you can down you know download or get all the the business data uh, for you. Now it some of it you know it is what it is. Some of it's uh, accurate, some of it's not, but it is a lot of data uh, for free, right? And, and free is always good. All right. Speaking of free data, uh, you're going to get some free data right now. I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, do the presentation for today. Let me pull it up here. All right, does everybody see the screen there? Yes. All right. All right, so um, we're, as I said before, we're gonna talk today about uh, how to craft the lead magnets uh, that your customers can get cannot ignore. And so the whole topic today is going to be lead magnets. But the real question is, how are we, how can you make your, your website or your directory uh, contribute more to your business? Because I think everybody gets visitors every day uh, and they either click on your website, go through some content and they leave and you are, are none the wiser for them being there, right? We don't have any calls to action. Uh, we don't actually convert any of that casual traffic into future sales. And uh, the reason is, is because we're not providing them anything in exchange for some information uh, that, that we need to further market to them or, or turn them into a client later. Obviously, some of the people that go to your directory sign up for a membership uh, and, and that's good, but it's probably only five or 10 percent or less that, that actually do that. So you're actually losing 90 percent of the traffic and getting no information for that. So um, lead magnets is where that comes in. And that's what we're going to talk about today and how to craft those lead magnets uh, that your customers, uh, you know, cannot ignore. So this is a uh, a blog post on a website called Backlinko. Uh, the website's run by a guy named uh, Brian Dean, and he teaches people how to to get more search engine traffic for the website. And so the content of the blog here, the guy or the website's really not uh, of importance here. Uh, the importance is the screenshot, right? It's just a, a regular blog post on his website. And uh, at first glance, it looks like any other blog post, right? There's headline at the top. You got main article content below that. And there's some in extra information on the side. It looks like a normal blog post. However, uh, but if you look closely and I, I highlighted it here, you can see that there's actually a yellow text box after that post intro. And that yellow box is where all the magic happens. The text in the box reads, if it's too small for everybody or too grainy on the replay here, it says free bonus. Click here to get access to a free PDF checklist that shows you how to execute all 17 techniques from this post. The checklist also includes two bonus strategies. So what Brian is essentially doing is he's offering a free bonus that complements his blog post. And so when somebody clicks on that yellow box on his website, they're gonna get this pop up on his screen. And then when they actually fill out and add their email address to that, they get sent a copy of this beautifully designed PDF that he put together. And so there's a lot of you know pieces going on uh, on there. And we're going to break down each one of those steps today in the webinar here in just a minute. Uh, but first, I want to tell you like how that uh, was advantageous to him uh, when he added that lead magnet. And so when he added that yellow box, he actually generated eight more leads on that web page than he had previous. And he didn't have to redesign his whole website or his whole blog. He didn't have to change up uh, cold call people or do a, any other weird marketing strategies. He literally uh, didn't do anything. He just added that simple yellow box with that content that he created and he increased his leads by eight times on that page. So just think about that. I mean, if, if he had, let's say 10 leads, 
uh, for the week on that blog post uh, before, and he, he got eight times that it would be 80 leads, right? Uh, because people want that content, gave him their address, and he had that much more pull of information from his audience that visit his website every day. You know, so 70 more potential customers uh, for that. And again, those are just hypothetical hypothetical numbers, but uh, it, that's the general uh, multiplication, right, of what that lead magnet can do for your, your email capture. And that's just one small change, right, on just one page and on one blog post. He has additional ones on other pages. It's actually going to be exponential on that. So just think about what that could do for your directory if you had a ebook or a lead magnet on that. So let's break down uh, each stage of that to see what's going on and then how you can recreate that success uh, a little bit, hopefully, for your directory. So the um, the yellow box obviously is a call to action, right? That's what we call it, a CTA, a call to action. Uh, and its purpose is to basically offer that reader something of value for them. So the goal is to take your audience from that passive reading mode of reading the blog post or looking at a video or looking at a listing under directory and move them into taking action mode. You wanna offer them something so good that they can't resist clicking on that and uh, giving you their email for that. So if your call, if your call to action uh, does its job and the reader clicks the link, they're going to be invited to enter their email address. And now it's basically it's important uh, that you have somebody's email address because it means that you can stay in touch with them uh, after that, right? After they leave your website, you have something from them. You traded content for their information, and that that uh, is going to get you sales later on. Uh, and that's the whole point of a lead magnet. And we'll talk about how to do that a little bit later. So the uh, the final step and step number three is that after you get their email address, right, you have to deliver on the promise. You have to actually get them uh, what was offered in that call to action, right? You have to get them that um, uh, ebook content or whatever it is. And in this case, Brian gave him that PDF that I showed you with the with his secret tips. And that PDF that he provided, that's what's called a lead magnet. And that's the incentive you offer somebody in exchange for their email address. And the lead magnet is that center of, uh, of the strategy, but it's also the most difficult part to get right. Because you can throw all the other stuff on there, but you actually have to have the content uh, to provide them that they're going to want and be happy with that. So we're going to go into more detail on that a little bit later on how to actually do do the lead magnet and make it because that's where the rubber meets the road on this. So let's talk a little bit about lead magnets themselves. So um, I kind of already said what this was. What is a lead magnet? Um, I don't want to, you know, focus too much on the, the jargon of lead magnet. I'm sure everybody's heard that a million times. But uh, whenever I say the word lead magnet, just think uh, to yourself, uh, what am I offering to people? What is that something of value in exchange for somebody's email address? And so um, the when you look at this, uh, you know, how do we define something of value? That's the key part of that sentence, right? Something of value. How do you define that, though? And that's a pretty broad term, right? I mean, Brian gave away a PDF, uh, but the answer is, is will any PDF do? I mean, what's got to be in that PDF in order to, to be something of value? And bottom line is whatever you give them, it needs to be an asset that, it, that attracts the prospects, right? It needs to have value to them. It needs to be specific to their needs and it needs to be specific to their needs right now. Otherwise, they're not going to click today. They're going to think they can come back later and get it. So it needs to be something that's specific that addresses a need that they have and that they actually want. And so what, in my opinion, the best way that to give people something of value, you know, obviously without spending money is to help them with a problem that they are currently experiencing. And that's kind of what all these lead magnets normally do. If somebody's having difficulty with something and all they have to do is trade uh, their email address in order to get that solution to the problem that you're gonna provide them, people will do that without thinking twice. And, and you probably have done it yourself uh, many times in the past uh, to get that lead magnet or the content because it's something that answered or solved the problem for you. And then the, the next part is you wanna give it to them for free. You wanna do it for free. Because that lure of free is an incredible, powerful uh, magnet and, and draws people in. Uh, it's called the zero price effect, basically, is what that's called, because uh, humans love free things. I don't know what it is, but they, they don't see any downside to free, right? If there's a choice between something that's uh, you know worth t uh, $20 and, and you have to pay $1 to get it, uh, you'd rather uh, p uh, get $5 worth of material and, and pay zero. So you have nineteen dollars of value on on one side, but you have to pay a dollar. Everybody go for the five five dollars for nothing every day. 
because free has uh, that leveraging power. Um, and so that intoxicating power of free that you've probably experienced as well uh, is, is that first kickstart and that first step of the process to create that value optimization process for all your clients uh, in your directory for that, that lead magnet. Uh, and so the uh, lead, uh, we'll just go over a quick review of the lead magnets uh, real quick. So they don't have to be lengthy, right? They don't have to be complex and they don't have to be time in intensive to create, but you simply need to solve a specific problem with a specific solution for a specific segment of your market. Uh, so the the first one is, do the, does your audience care about it, right? Is it a topic set or problem that you're addressing uh, that matters to your audience? The second thing we talked about is their value to it. Is it specific and relevant uh, to their particular uh, needs of your niche audience for your directory? A lot of times those, uh, the best, I think, uh, e you know, ma magnets, uh, whether it be an ebook or whatever, they have like two two different things. They have uh, both short-term immediate value. It's going to tell me something like, boom, I, I just, these three things, it's going to give me immediate uh, answer, but it may have some more uh, deep, complex uh, solutions in there that's going to want them to keep that PDF around or, or reference it later. So there's pro usually a long-term information tool to that as well. Uh, and then, uh, you know, is it specific and relevant? I mean, visitors uh, tend to get irritated a lot of times with it. There's an opt-in form on a page that really has nothing to do with the direct content they're viewing on that page. So make sure that that opt-in form is always relevant, that it's uh, uh, to the content that they're there for to look at. And then there's going to be a huge boost in conversions for you. And then the, the last one, you know, is it free? Um, because that's going to make a huge difference for you. So let's just go over real quick uh, some of the, the lead magnets. Uh, BD, I think, has done a, a webinar on this before, kind of give you some examples of those. Um, here's just a, a laundry list of them. So as you're thinking about, if you want to do this for your directory, just think about um, a lot of people feel like I don't have something to give away. It could be any number, any one of these things, right? You can create an ebook. Uh, you could have some tips, checklists, or how-to guides. Uh, maybe you all have a newsletter and you're simply signing people up for a newsletter, but you make it more dynamic than the one that's at the bottom of your directory. Uh, maybe you offer a downloadable file, or maybe there's a, you're challenging somebody in your Facebook group or social media to do something. Uh, maybe it's a course or video series that's kind of locked behind uh, doors that you already have on your directory that you can kind of offer up if they sign up for that. Maybe it's a contest or giveaway. You have something that you bought uh, on sale with the COVID-19 stuff here and you got some stuff you want to give away with the contest, you can do that. Uh, maybe it's just content. You you have something of value that uh, you normally would offer for free and they can just click to on your directory. Maybe you put it behind the guise of this as a uh, content and they have to give you their email in order to actually get that content because it's something really good. Uh, maybe it's a trial of software. Maybe it's a trial of service for your directory, right? Maybe that's the, the, the um, it's not a ebook at all. It's just your actual directory. You're just presenting it in a different manner. Um, maybe you have a private group, Facebook group, or an event that you're going to do. Uh, samples, uh, coupons or deals you can pr provide out that you have access to. or And maybe maybe the lead magnet is just you, right? Maybe it's a consult. Uh, some sort of website review or maybe some training that you put together or haven't put together. You're just going to do training with them on the fly because uh, you're trying to gain access to to them and uh, all your client base and just kind of become the expert for your niche. So uh, I think everybody can look at this list and go, you know what, I can I can find a couple or, or several of these that I can provide as a lead man. I just need to know how to execute on that. So um, that, I'm just to help you guys uh, figure out some examples too. Let's take a look at a few concepts concrete examples so you can see what I uh, mean exactly by solve a, a problem. So the first one here uh, is an example resource guide. It's a resource guide is just a collection of things, right, that people can buy or gain access to to improve their situation. Or it could be a tips and tricks resource. It could be a how-to guide. But the screenshot on, on the screen here on the right-hand side is basically a resource guide. And it just gives a list of tools that people can uh, buy along with a short description about that tool. So it's not even something that they they have. It's just something that uh, they're offering up as uh, resources that they have found valuable. Um, and this particular lead magnet is titled the New Facebook Marketers Resource Guide. And so the problem that the reader might be experiencing is, hey, our Facebook marketing strategy is not performing well. Um, and this lead magnet helps with that. So that's the kind of hook. And then people love to buy tools that solve a problem because it's uh, it's a bit of a shortcut, right? They don't have to figure it out for themselves if somebody else is telling me that this is really good and here's how it works. Um, those are very popular. And, and if you can buy something that solves a problem and saves you time and money, uh, then they, they probably will be willing to do that. 
The uh, second example here is a checklist. Uh, checklist is basically a series of accountable tasks, right? That people can complete to achieve a goal. And so this example is a blog post creation checklist. And it basically solves that people uh, problem, excuse me, for people who are you know new to blogging, have no idea what they should be doing. And it basically leads them through that process that they can take off items as they complete them. It just makes it really easy to do something that they didn't think they were able to do before. And so again, it's really easy checklist to create, but because it has that interactive element, that physical task of checking items off, people feel like you're really going to help them and that that's something of value to them. So that's another example. Uh, ebook obviously is a very popular lead magnet. So it takes a little bit more time to create, but it's really totally worth it, right, for the reader. And so in this example, it's the complete guide to email marketing uh, from the ConvertKit team. And it's uh, perfect for people who might want to you know, be a little scared of email marketing because it's such a big topic. There's so many different things that you can do. Uh, but the you know, convert book put this ebook together so that people can get all the information they need in one place and they don't have to read you know 50 different articles or browse around the internet all afternoon on 50 different websites trying to find out all the information instead they download one pdf it's got all the stuff and in, in, info they need they can refer back to it and when they need to problem solved right and then what do they see every time they go back in this document convert kit right and so now it's it's top of mind is what we call that top of mind every time they see your logo or your information and, the, and they'll think of your directory or your products or service. And the last one we'll go over today is uh, uh, called a lookbook. And it's basically just a collection of visual assets that are based around the same topic. So in this example, uh, the creator compiled 37 screenshots of beautifully designed Christmas emails. Um, again, kind of probably of a, a marketing agency, but this type of lead magnet is basically you know good for designers. They might be on a tight deadline and struggling for information. You could do one for your particular niche uh, 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 or other data. It doesn't have to be uh, images of emails. It could be images of anything or examples of anything for, for your niche. Uh, but the main value of this lead magnet is convenience. Like the ebook example we just looked at you know, on the previous screen, this lookbook saves the reader from having to search the web for lots of different images or you know, fill in the blank for whatever you're providing them. But it's valuable because it saves them time and the content's curated. So you can, you know, you know it's high quality. You're only going to put the best stuff in there. You're not going to stick random stuff uh, from the internet in the book you're trying to, you know, uh, push your brand with. So uh, people don't think twice about sharing their email address uh, to get this kind of information because it's valuable to them. So, um, so what makes a good lead magnet? You know, the, just in the four examples we just saw there of those different lead magnets, you probably noticed that there's there's similar similar things in common for all those. And those commonalities are what separates that good lead magnet from a, a bad lead magnet. Uh, and you'll notice that in each of those examples, they're valuable, right? They solved actual problems that somebody was experiencing. Um, not only that, but they solved a problem that the reader was experiencing at that current time, not six months from now. It's something that they're dealing with right now. And they're all well designed, right? Which in turn makes them feel more valuable. Just because um, they're free doesn't mean they have to look free, if that, if that makes sense to you guys. Um, so that they look good. And then the content in each of those was such high quality, it helps build your authority, right? If you're putting good content in there, they actually see you as a market leader, a voice that they want to follow. They, they'll they actually come back later uh, to get other content from you. And then, of course, eventually potentially purchase uh, your membership uh, directory or your products or your services. And that's really the ultimate goal. And so finally, the, the lead magnets that we just saw, the potential to lead to further interactions. We just talked about that. Um, and then we'll just, you know, for the ebook, for example, uh, when somebody learns about email marketing, they're going to need some software. And then who do they look to for that software? Of course, the people who wrote that ebook or that course, right? ConvertKit. And that's probably who they're going to go with. So those are some of the, the you know, areas that make a good lead magnet. And I think we could all agree on that. So really the, the $10 million question for everybody here is, well, do I do I need a lead magnet? I mean, I, I, I just run a directory, right? I, I don't think I need a lead magnet. And so um, I just would leave you with, uh, I guess, these three points here is that getting traffic to your site is nice, right? Everybody likes traffic, but there's not much point of having any traffic if, if the visitors don't convert or if they don't subscribe to your directory, if they don't buy your products, they don't convert. They really don't care if you have any traffic, right? So those lead magnets are one of the best ways that you can gather audience insight, uh, generate leads, and then start nurturing that process to make uh, that ultimate conversion to revenue for your business uh, easier at a later time. 
So every person that visits your website and reads your content is a potential lead. And we already talked about that. If 90% of your people are leaving without you getting any information, um, you, you, you're missing the opportunity to give them a reason to share their email address for, with you. And that's where the lead magnets come in. Uh, but today's, I'm not, I'm not really going to talk about email marketing today. I mean, email is probably the most effective marketing channel we still have today. A lot of, uh, obviously, social media is all the rage now. But re realize that really email is, is uh, I don't have the stats. I think it's like 40% uh, uh, higher conversion rate or more uh, money return, excuse me, rate than any other uh you know, exchange for money. So every dollar spent on email marketing gets 40% more in return than any other uh, process. So email marketing is still important. And, um, you know, emails, just think about email. It gives you a, a way to reach your current and potential customers whenever you want. You don't, you're not waiting on a, a Facebook, uh, you know, uh, change to mess that up. Uh, you're not worried about the ad rate changes or whatever. As soon as you get that email address, uh, you can contact them, you know, whenever you want. Obviously, within reason, if you spam them too much, they're going to leave your list. But it, but it makes sense, right? You can reach them whenever you want. Um, and you can, you know, get, drive uh, page views, sales, reviews, anything else that you want uh, just by getting their address. So, um uh, very important to still do email marketing today, and, but um, that would probably be a subject for another uh, another topic. So uh, these are some of the common uh, misperception, again, of, of why you don't think you need a lead magnet. You're like, I don't have any traffic right now, right? My I, It's a directory is just starting. I don't have a lot of traffic. But remember that driving t traffic to your site before you optimize for conversions uh, is kind of like pouring water into a leaky bucket, right? If you don't, if you don't plug the holes, if you don't have a way to get uh, access to the emails now uh, by plugging those holes in the bucket, you're, when you pour in a lot of uh, you know leads later, you won't have that process down. So optimize your site first, and then you'll be ready to make more efficient use of the traffic that you will eventually get. But if you don't start somewhere and be, you get the traffic first and then try to convert. Again, we've already talked about this. You're going to lose a lot of uh, the potential sales and, and revenue because you didn't already have that lead magnet in. in in, uh, in the works. So the other common misperception is I don't even, I don't even, or, uh, I don't need an email list, right? And maybe you don't right now, um, but you will, right? It can take months or years to build that email list, but if you, you, you can't start building the list uh, uh, unless you start today uh, by adding that lead magnet and getting a way to get their, that relationship with your audience built. And so uh, when you actually have a product to sell or you actually have a lot more stuff on your directory and you're ready to sell, you'll then have the email list to back it up. It's a lot better than having a product to sell ready to go. And now you don't have anybody to tell, tell about it because your email list is em empty. So um, no better time to start than, than right now to start building that list. And so the next question is, okay, I, you convinced me I need a lead magnet. Uh, how do I actually make a lead magnet? So all those examples I, I gave you all look pretty fancy, right? And the, the design is very important. And we already talked about that. Um, but the, the more important part is that it actually feels valuable and it doesn't seem like something free. It's like something that you actually put some time in uh, into it. And so how do you actually go about making uh, your lead magnet? Uh, and you have a couple different options to do that. So here's just three of them. You can obviously design it yourself, right? Uh, but you got to be careful with that because un unless you have some experience uh, and unless you end up, you know, l making it look good, uh, you could actually have it, you know, look cheap and free and and not represent your brand well uh, because you don't didn't know how to make graphics or didn't know how to design a cover or you didn't know how to write the content. So be very careful about that. You can totally do it on yourself. Uh, but it, it's uh, it's hard to do and make look really nice. Second is you can hire a designer. Um, you, obviously, you can get these a lot cheaper than you used to be. The internet has allowed you to be able to do that stuff. But realize uh, to get the right people, uh, not waste your money. It can be uh, you know waste your time and expense. There's a lot of back and forth, uh, drain on your time. Sometimes may, you know you don't have the right person. Uh, they take your money and they kind of give you still a, a product that looks free and cheap. Uh, you might you're thinking to yourself, I might as well have done it myself. Um, so it can work out in your favor and be really good. Uh, but, it, you know, maybe it's not in, in the proper English or it just doesn't look good. So there's um, there's good good things about that. And there's potential pitfalls as well. And then the third option is you can use a software that's uh, built to do that. That's built to make ebooks. 
um, that has everything integrated into it. And we're actually going to go in the second half of the webinar today. I'll go into a detail about uh, one that we're offering up on Directory Toolkit now. It's beacon.by. Uh, it's an ebook software that is able to do all of that stuff for you. So those are kind of the three options you have. And obviously, you can do any of them. You can be successful uh, with any of those. You just have to pick one of those processes. Uh, the next question is, so, um, you know, let's assume you have the lead magnet created now, uh, but you still need a way to offer that material up to the person. So how do you do that? We, we gave an example at the very beginning uh, where he had that uh, that form to be filled out and uh, then he sent the, the PDF to everybody who signed up. And so bottom line is you're going to need a form to do that. I think everybody knows that. Brilliant Directories actually has a great way, a great hack to create a lead magnet using your BD site. And I think they actually have a video on that. Uh, on their webpage that you guys can go uh, search for and look at. And it's actually a pretty good process uh, detailing how to do that. Basically, what you do is uh, you create a landing page for, with a PDF on it uh, for the downloadable content. And you have to upload it in the back end of your cPanel uh, to upload the PDF. But you make a web page that links to that. And then you clone the contact us form that redirects uh, and you change in the settings to redirect that form after they submit it to go to that thank you page or the, the ebook page that you made. And then you have to create another web page with that and, and then embed that form on it. So, uh, and then after you make that web page, then you connect the, the link to that web page so they can fill out the form, get be sent to that other page and download the PDF. So you can do it with your BD account, but obviously uh, there's a lot of processes there. A lot of it's, it's really a workaround, right? It's not necessarily developed uh, to do that. Uh, but bottom line is uh, you have to make a form, get, there's a myriad of other ways to do that, softwares that can do that as well. Uh, the Beacon, I, I'll give you an example, can do that as well, but just need something that can add a form in there to provide the content. So whatever process you use, you know, whatever form management tool, I just have some uh, keys that uh, can help you out and to try to increase the conversions for that. Um, and here's a, a few tips for you guys. Uh, the, the first thing is, is make the form short. Right. Uh, if you if you clone the contact us on the BD site, it's going to have a lot of stuff in there. Maybe it looks like image A on the left there. You're going to want to remove most of that stuff. You don't need the property ad their address or um, a lot of other information on the contact us. You literally just need um, you know uh, email. Like it could be it, even the image B there is probably too much. It could just be one blank with email, and then it's get my ebook. Right, email for ebook. That's the exchange. You don't need the other information. You can get that information later. Uh, what you don't want to do is complicate the process and, and try to uh, basically get rid of some of the, the leads that you could have otherwise had. So make it short. Uh, the other thing is uh, you want to allow the client to visualize the content. Uh, images you know, make all the difference. Just look at, uh, again, I don't have any stats for you on here, but it's, uh, it's proven that the low conversion rate, if you just say join our mailing list, you guys probably already know this. It's at the bottom of every BD page says join my newsletter, right? So you click it. Uh, how many people get that? They, they don't know what they're getting into, right? There's nothing to visualize what the exchange is. But the one on the right, it's a lot higher conversion rate. They can visually see, I give you my e name and email. I get that book right there. That's what I'm getting. You get my email. I get that book. If they visualize the content. It's a lot, uh, lot easier to do. So I always recommend adding some sort of picture. It could be, you know, inside that blog, you, but be very uh, explicit on what they're getting in exchange for their email. It'll help that conversion rate. And so finally, in that whole lead uh, process is that um, you need to actually get them the PDF, right? Or uh, once you get their email as well, uh, you need to do something with it. So uh, you may have the lead magnet. You may have gotten them to give you their email on that form if you're using BD or any other software. But now what? Like you need to convert them somehow in the future uh, by writing follow up into your directory or services or products. And so the problem with many systems and, you know, even if you use BD there is that info gets stuck in a silo. Right. And so if you're using it for BD, uh, it ends up in that inbound contact system right on your thing. Great. You got the data, but you're still nothing happens unless you pull that out. Uh, that email info out and start using it. So you're going to have to manually add it into another um, email marketing uh, campaign. You're going to have to do something with it. It's not, there's nothing automatic with that. So um, that is something that you're going to have to grapple with as well. And so um, these are the um, these are the five you know five things that uh, for the process recap for the lead magnets. Um, 
that you need to do and think about. Uh, so we started the webinar by asking how can you can make your website contribute more to your business. And, and this is how the lead magnet can do that. So the first thing is you need to design the template, add images and write the content. You got to get the ebook stuff that, uh, you know, know your customer, know your niche, figure out what the problem is that you're going to solve for and make the content. The next, uh, you need to make it into a presentable lead magnet, right? You need to convert whatever that content is into something that looks good that they want to exchange their email for. Third, you need to offer that lead magnet onto your website. Somehow you need uh, um, to add that into a page. So you need some page content in order to introduce that and to put uh, that fourth item in there is, is the form that actually collects the email addresses. And then the follow on thing is you need to actually through that form, deliver the PDF and then use the, the biggest thing is at the end there, use that email information to integrate uh, the list with your marketing uh content. So those are the five steps. And so you can all do that manually. Uh, and the software I'm going to go over a little bit later does all five of these things in one product. It's going to give you a design template. It's going to add images or pull it automatically from blog content and write the content for you into a nice presentable lead magnet content. It's going to offer uh, a you know downloadable uh, embed that automatically puts that lead magnet into your uh, page. It's going to put the form on there. It's going to grab the email address after somebody does it. It's going to send them the PDF after they add their content into the form. And then it's going to pull that email address that they put into the form and directly tie it into any email marketing software that you already use and automatically subscribe them to any particular uh, you know, email sequence that you have made. So you can do it all separately or you can do it with software that I've talked about before. So that's um, in a nutshell there, how, uh, what lead magnets are, all the different processes on that, uh, and uh, what you need to do in order to create it. Obviously, it has a lot of benefits. Uh, there's some work involved, but uh, if you can use some technology and uh, some software to, to knock it out of the park in one fell swoop, uh, that's what I always recommend. So that's the presentation for today. Does anybody have any questions on uh, lead magnets or other just general topic sets with that. Yeah, there there were twenty five slides left. What happened? <laughs> that's that's the second half. I so I'll go over the beacon uh, uh, process or what it, what it actually entails. Hey Lisa. Hey Lisa. Hey, you got, sorry, I got caught in a meeting, so I'll have to uh, watch the first half of this on video. Meetings, we hate meetings. This is not a meeting. I know. <laughs> so does anybody does anybody use a lead magnet right now or have thought about doing it or well, I'm thinking about I'm thinking about doing it. Uh, in my case, I, I can go at it not only from a directory, but from what I do like web hosting and development and that type of thing, security. Those type of things too, where I can give like like a checklist or something. I, I'm just trying to think of the best route in my particular situation. So, right. I mean, the good thing about these lead magnets too is you can uh, you can change it up, right? You can say I want to do a checklist, and then you're like, well, I wasn't getting some traction on the checklist. Maybe they want some actual content, just more, uh, you know, an ebook type of thing. And you can try that out. Cool. Um, and actually, you can probably, you know, if you got really Gucci, you could make an A/B test where you make have different pages. With the same content, you just have a different ebook, right? Offering and see yeah. which one converts more. Um, same content on the blog, maybe, but the checklist is, you know, like a selling, like hot or selling. It's free, right? But uh, you're getting signed ups like uh, hotcakes, and the other ebook is just not moving at all. You know, it could be just the cover image. You know, maybe the, yeah. somebody likes one cover image better than the other one. So, yeah, sure. I personally, from my own experience, having downloaded probably. Uh, let's see what month are we in June? Probably about fifty ebooks so far this year, none of which I've read. <laughs> I think it's better to go with a product or a service or a discount or a coupon that relates to what you're doing. I mean, everybody uses the PDF, so obviously, you know. Well, it worked, right, Frank? You just said you gave fifty people your email address. They, yeah. I mean, you know, they could almost probably care less that you read the content. They right. have your email you know address. Right? So, they, but here's what I do. I have a technique. Okay, they send me there the link to get my product, my my download, 
And then the next email I get from them, I unsubscribe. <laughs> right. Like, and some will, right? But I a lot of people care will. less what they have to offer me. <laughs> I mean, it all comes down to uh, uh, the, the follow on email marketing too, right? Sure. Um, that's that's a whole nother topic set on um, how you do the, the email uh, stream, you know, the the titles, the what's in there to, to open, you know, increase your click through rate on the email, right? That's right. the next step. Um, but again, even even if it's email, you don't have to have some some stream or whatever. Maybe on, maybe on there you want to grab their phone number later, or you just send them a quick email. Uh, you don't have anything Gucci set up. You just try to get a, a hold of them to talk to them too. Right, so, but, but but the best way to keep people on your list is to let them know that every month you're going to give them something of value. And personally, and the go you have to. I preface everything that I say with. I don't expect anybody to do something the way that I do it because I am extremely contrarian. I look for what somebody does and I say, how can I do that different or better? I don't want to do what they're doing because everybody is doing what they're doing. So I try to find my own little twist on something. Does it always work? No, but I'm willing to give it a try. Does it cost me much in the long run? So if I'm giving somebody something, then, you know, every month I'm going to send them a coupon that gives them something off of something that I'm selling, doing, or a service. Well, theoretically, you're in a niche, right? You ha And if you make several lead magnets or several pieces of content, they're all should be somewhat interrelated. So you can you can basically repurpose the content you already made as the follow-on string of free stuff, right? Right. Um, one, right. Of the, one of the things I didn't mention that uh, you mentioned uh, doing some other stuff that, that people are um, – um, you know, not, um, I guess, uh, you're, other people are doing, you don't want to do other stuff, um, is that you, sometimes you just want to actually do, uh, I guess, look what other, look at what other people are paying for. Uh, it, maybe you're going to offer something for free, but you want to look at what other people are paying for, or what other, uh, uh, services that people actually are paying for. And then maybe you offer a free ebook, uh, on that topic of what people are actually paying for. And that's something for free. And so uh, it actually uh, knows, it actually goes towards a topic, you know, people are interested in because they're buying and then makes your, um, I guess your content that much more, uh, you know, appealable because now yours is free. Some of the other stuff is maybe paid for. So, right. Like, you know, and most of the ones, like I signed up for something yesterday was a, I know nothing about TikTok. I mean, and I don't really want to know anything about it, but somebody sent me an email. Uh, here's a five free, uh, five things you need to know about, you know, getting rich on TikTok. So, you know, I, I clicked on the link and I got my free goodies, but within three minutes, I got the $97 course offer. You know what I mean? So, and I, I and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, that's how you sell. But my attitude was, Hey, I didn't even get a chance to read your five things you gave me for free yet. I right. got giving me a two day breather. You know? <laughs> Let me digest the material you already sent me. You're beating me over the head already for ninety seven dollars. No, right. I just immediately unsubscribe. Not it's all about the relationship building, right? And I mean, you wanna you wanna you wanna get that relationship built first before you ask uh, ask do for it. A little bit. Yeah. You know. You, you probably covered this in what you guys talked about earlier, but I think, you know, it really has a lot to do with making sure that the ebook you're offering is really targeted to what your niche is looking for. Like for us, we have a conscious living magazine, so we have lots of content. So we repackage those as ebooks and that's how we get signups. It's like, get your free Epic health tips. And then we like, I'm just going to probably use one as a lead magnet, either, you know, on, Facebook or some some places. Hey, know. Lisa, can I? Can, do you mind showing uh, me showing your website? Um, oh, yeah, sure. Um, so, um, so we'll just show everybody the lead magnet. I know uh, it's not hard to, and this is good, right? It's not hard to find it on your website. I can uh, I can always uh, find out where to get. It. I think it just pops up on the main page here. Right? I thought it did. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe it already. Maybe, oh, there you go. So it looks like you have kind of an exit intent uh, pop up here, but um, here, so so this is what we were talking about earlier, where uh, you're promoting an event, right? And now yeah. 
the call to action looks very good. You got an image here, get my ticket, right? And so now you click on that and it goes to another website, which is fine. It's, it's the same Epic um, set up there. And now now you're you're being directed to something. Now this is not necessarily a, a direct lead magnet, right? Because you're basically, um, the, the, lead, the lead here is they, they get the info opportunity to buy and you're, you're, you're dragging them right, right to that, um, for the sale. You're not giving them anything. So or at least on here. So. Yeah. The one, the one that comes up at the top is a bar that says about the health tips. And I don't know why it didn't come up on yours. I think because well, I have it. Oh, here it is. Well, here's, here's your subscribe button. Yeah. Right? I actually have three of them. So if they get health tips, they sign up there and then they, they get the link to the health tips. Or at the top of the page, the when you first come on it, it's a little uh, bar across the very top. But yeah, I think I've, I've, I think I probably clicked, closed it one of these times. It, exactly. It. And so if you close it, then it doesn't come back up until you know you you go in again. And I think we said it's for like the next day, but right. it's the same kind of thing. It just has, hey, you want to get your health tips and and I and I don't know. You know, I, I saw you mentioned something called Beacon. I don't know what that is, but I'm going to look at it. I use Hello Bar. It's HelloBar.com, yeah. which is maybe one you mentioned as well. It's it's free, um, and it has A/B testing. So, like on that first pop up, um, I I had uh, two different color ones and two different pictures, um, and one was performing a lot better than the other. So I so I turned the other one off. So so those are kind of cool too if people haven't yeah. tried those. Yeah, we talked about the A-B testing a little bit earlier. Yeah, but this, I know this is what it looked like on yours, right? Or kind of does a little uh, motion thing to get it, there. Exactly. Of. Yeah, it just pops up and yeah. it's really easy to set up too. Let me, uh, actually, let me, uh, let me do an inco incognito screen here or window. Can you guys still see the screen there? Yes. Okay. So let me see if that does the trick, thinking I'm a new person here. There we go. So again, um, so you got both of them there, but here's the pop-up she was talking about. So um, email name, yes, I want this, and then it'll get that, the health tips. So yeah, all sorts of uh, all sorts of options you can use. All right, so I have a question. Sure. Are oh, you done with that? I'm sorry. Yeah, good. Uh, so. Now, if I were going to do a PDF as a lead magnet, here's how I would approach it. And I'm going to relate it directly to a directory website. So sure. I send out an email. Uh, now, I thought none of this out. I'm just giving you the, the overview of how I would think I would do this. I send out an email that offers them a PDF of and I'm mailing this to business owners to get them into my directory eventually. Why you need to be in a business directory. So you give them the full story. Okay. Now, what's the hardest thing to do to get somebody into, once they get into the directory, what's the hardest thing to get them to do? And that's fill out their information completely. So what I would do is say, okay, um, Here's this PDF. You read this PDF, and as you get to the tail end, you tailor the story to. Um, and and again, this this is just my concept. Don't take what I'm saying is this is what I would have in my letter, okay? Um, but the concept is, yes, I know the last thing you want to be bothered with is going to a directory site and putting in all your information, even if it's free, okay? And what you tell them is that their listing going in is free. So it's free, but I know you don't want to do it. So here's what I'm going to do. I have a $97 concierge service where I completely will do your listing for you. So if you sign up in my directory by this date, I give you the $97 concierge service. I will complete your listing. Then two weeks later, it's... You've got your free listing. We see that it's beautifully populated. Now what I'm going to do is offer you a discount to move up to the next level. 
because why do you want to be in the basic free listing? That's for losers. Okay. You're, you're, you're a standout business. You want to stand out. I'm going to make that happen for you. So I'm going to give you 50% off to move up to the next level. And then I'm going to, I'm going to, and I always do this. And if you'll give me two contacts that I can make the same offer to along with you, I'll do yours for whatever. In other words, trying to make like the inverted triangle. Yeah. The, I mean, the thing you got to be careful of is making it too complex there where it takes you five minutes to explain what you're doing and they, they yeah, lose I interest. Do. Like, I, I don't know. What three sentences. Was that? I can do it in three sentences. Okay. Again, when I'm it, it, it needs to be very, very easy exchange. Like you give me, you give me email address, I give you product. Exactly. Email. But again, I'm trying to give you the ethereal concept, you know, yeah. so you can put. I'm going to put a little meat on the bones, uh, and then just constantly every month or every two or three weeks, walk them through a process until you get them into your absolute best account, best level membership. They got the best price they're ever going to get now. But, and then what did they do to get the to the top level? Well, they have to give me a testimonial or they have to give me a video testimonial. But it's an exchange the whole way. You do something for me. I do something for you. But that way there's value every time they get an email. They get to save money and improve their stature on or in my directory. That to me is a... a a viable lead magnet process. But if I were yeah. to tell them, well, this month I'm going to give you a PDF on uh, how to use social media to increase your uh, your views in my directory. <laughs> I wouldn't want that. I don't yeah. think anybody else would either because there's 8,000 things like that out there. It's what Yeah, but that's the cool. I, this kind of goes back to what I was saying about uh, can't resist free. Um, even if you've already have uh, two eBooks on the same thing, this had a different cover and the title was a little bit different. And you're like, well, maybe there's something in there that I didn't get on the other two eBooks. I'm just going to do this one too. I'm going to get my free ebook on. And right. so people will do it again. To, you know, and they give you their email just to see if there's something in there that they didn't already see. So, right now, but you said something that I don't agree with for me. And again, I always have to preface it. I'm different. I look for the contrarian view. But when you said, would you rather get five dollars worth of information or free for free, or twenty dollars worth for a dollar? I'm paying the dollar every time because I want you to give me as much information as possible out of the gate. Don't jerk me around with, well, I'm going to give you some now, and I'm going to give you more later. You know, I'll pay the dollar. Give me what I need to know. Because if I got to quibble over a dollar, my life's in bad shape. Well, as, I, as I always said, Frank, you're one in a million. And so all the other 999,999 people are doing the free version. But, but, but wait, but you say that, but, but, but you can't say that unless you A, B, and A, B test the freebie and the dollar version. And I'd be willing to bet you a lot more people than you think would pay the dollar. Well, you, you maybe get a few dollars, but you got a lot less leads. And I, I think it was Neil Patel, I think, uh, that had that on there for one of his things. But it was it was like it was like six to one, like the ratio of uh, of of those things that everybody's going for the three out of six to one ratio. Quality. I, yeah. You can you can give me a thousand leads that are worthless. Give me a hundred leads that buy from me. Hey Frank, address right. by itself is really me. There's nothing attached to it except I wanted your free stuff. That's all it means. It doesn't mean they're ever going to give me a penny. So that's why I've never built a list, never. And you know what? I never will. <laughs> I think that's, I, that's just everybody tells you you must build a list. No, you don't have to build a list. Now we want everybody to have a list, Frank. I'm going to cut that out of the webinar. No, no, I, don't want I have to a list. list. The list joking. is people that I'm doing business with, not people who have asked me for free crap because I've yeah. given people an opportunity to do that. My list are my clients or really, really hot leads. 
Right. But I mean, if you, if you, you, if you converse at all by email, then, then you, you have a list, it may just be a smaller list, but. But I don't converse a lot by email. I pick up the phone and talk to people. Nobody does that. For, I'm just joking. I, I, uh, I like to talk to people too, Frank, but I'm also a fan of billeting the email list because, um, you know, I mean, maybe I have a reason that I want sponsors or some other thing on there. It's like the bigger the list, the the more information you can get, you know, out to people and have sponsors. But I had a quick question about your concierge service. I've been thinking about doing something similar myself because uh, that's one of the reasons why I just switched from a free listing to a $29 as my bottom listing because there's too much spam. There's too many people not filling out, um, you know, images and things like that. So it's a big sure. waste, a waste of my time and energy. Right. Um, and so, um, you know, the bottom people, the 29, it's not too hard for them to fill out a listing, but I have a 99 and a 149. And so you said you charge $97 and I wondered well, how. I tell them that. I don't charge anybody $97. Okay, but even if you're telling them that, it's like, how, how has that worked out? Has a lot of, of people taken you up? On well, I'm, I'm doing it for the site that Ryan and I are working on now. I haven't actually done it yet. Okay, I just, I just, if, but, give, but here's, but here's how you get people to fill out their, their information. And this is something else I'm doing on my new site. I'm, I'm having a script installed that's a, a onboarding script, it walks them through the process of putting their information in, gives them tips on different, some things that need tips, like uh, uh, your your company motto. There's a space in there for your motto or your slogan. And I tell them like, you know, why that's important. It helps people paint a picture in their mind of what you're about, what your business is about. But then, but the way I start the process is by telling them before they fill out one little bit of info, that if they complete the onboarding process and complete all of their fields, at the end, there's a link for them to send me an email and it says, I completed all of my information. If I verify the information and it's all done, I send them a hundred dollar hotel, rental car and attraction discount card that's good forever at over a hundred thousand places in the world. So they can give it away if they know somebody that travels a lot or if they know they're ever going to rent a car, boom, they stuck. They stuck with it. I mean, it's kind of like a lead magnet, right? It's just a different for form or process, but you're, oh, you're offering some, they're offering up their data in exchange for that certificate. Right? Well, they're already, they already offered up their data to join the site. Right. This is to get them to do what needs to be done. Right. It's just a different exchange. They're exchanging their the rest of their content for the, the vacation as opposed to their email for something. Well, not really. Ex ex yeah. It's, they're giving up the information, but that's not really. That's one way of looking at it. My, the, the other way of looking at it is they're getting their information on your site to make your site look like everybody fills out their information. Right. So when other people see that everybody else is filling out all their information and they know they put their name, address, and phone number, they get to feel like the doofus that they are. That, um, if you guys, if you guys like look up on the, oh, I'm sorry, go, go ahead, Lisa. Oh, I was just going to say that that's, that seems like that's costing you a lot of money to get somebody no, to fill cost it me out. Nothing. It cost me, I belong to a service that I pay $3,000 a year for. That gives me hotel vacation, vacation certificates, dining out cards, hotel right. discount cards. So like the thing I'm doing with my, the reason I put this site together is to raise money for a nonprofit uh, animal sanctuary I run. Right. You know, if you take this one plan that I offer, so you've seen the list, you get this, you get this many videos, this many coupons, this many articles. When you get down to the bottom of my list, it says, and you get to choose between a USA or Mexico five-day vacation certificate. Whoa. That thing's worth between eight and twelve hundred dollars. I'm giving it to them. All they have to pay are the taxes and the resort fees, which average about a hundred dollars per vacation. 
Now, nobody's traveling right now, but the certificate is good for two years. If we're not traveling within two years, none of us are going to be running directories. It's all going to be over. <laughs> so that's how I'm playing it. <laughs> well, keep us, keep us posted how your concierge service works, because like I, I said, I'm going to have right a there. onboarding and video so and it shows them the how step-by-step step to do each section. And I'll put it into the membership location so that they can just go through it step by step as soon as I get everything the way I want. <laughs> right. Which someone else is charging $297 for just to get people to walk through this, which is fine. I mean, you know, I, I won't pay that. I'd rather tell somebody, I'll do it for you for free than, than you know. Uh, but I'm going to have this script. I'm paying to have it uh, built at Upwork. Um, but the other thing with the concierge services is every month I will email you and ask you if there's any updates that need to be put into your listing. Did you, you're an architect. Did, have you won an award? Oh, we, oh, we won an award. Yeah. Let's get that on my directory listing. Have you uh, opened a new location? Have you hired a new employee? Do you have a job opening? Just tell me what it is. I'll do it for you. Because then when I call them up and I say, hey, I've been doing this for you. I hope you're happy with what you're doing. Let me ask you, are you having any problems in your business when it comes to internet marketing, email, social media that you might be looking for some help for? Because now I've, I've already proven to them that I do my job. You give me what needs to be done. It's going to get done. Because an hour after you give me your information, I'm emailing you back with a link to your listing to show you that it's now a hundred percent updated. Wow. Mm -hmm. An hour later. Yeah. Uh, and they'll be interested to see how that plays out. Cause they're basically, you're trading that indebted. They're basically mentally indebted to you, right? They're like, Oh yeah, they've done these two things for me. I haven't given them anything. What, what did you, what do you do again? Oh uh, yeah. I think I, I maybe need something. You built credibility, right. you built trust and you built an image in their mind that this is a guy who gets things done. Right. And he's looking out for me. He cares that my listing and his directory is as good as it can be. And he's not asking me for any money. Yeah, one of the other ways you can do uh, the onboarding thing is uh, if you got, I, I demoed on mine, but I already uh, went to it. So I think it only pops up one time or one time a day or something. If you guys go to mediatraininghub.com, this media training hub.com. It's another uh, brand directory owner, but he actually has a pop-up on there and his lead magnet basically is, is a concierge service. Uh, and he has it linked to a type form uh, page where it basically just walks them through all of the stuff that they could, you know, doing four tabs on their BD directory by filling stuff in. It's on 20 tabs of the type form. And just one question at a time, like uh, what's your name? Uh, what's your business name? Uh, what is your business address? You know, it just goes through a type form. And then he, this concierge service, he just pulls that data off from there and then adds it to their listing. And uh, I think he said he's getting some pretty good follow through on that because people just think it's easier because they just fill in a form. They just type it one quick. They don't have to log in. They don't have to, try to figure out the system. Which tab do I go on? And he just does it for them. So that's how he fills out the concierge service. He just has a form. Uh, that pulls all that data. Are you so doing that for free members. I don't. I don't know if he's doing it for free or if that's paid. I think it's free. Uh, I think it's a, a limited promotion or something. I don't remember. You have to look at the the website. I think it's still in there. But offer um, it for free. I'm going to offer it along with. I'll do this ninety seven dollar thing. I think a better way to to do it would be if you'll upgrade to the next level now. Yeah, who knows? Maybe he's trying to get them indebted to you, like, oh, I have did your profile for you, and then they then that's the lead into upsell some other stuff. So yeah, but I mean, um, I'm gonna have like you know five thousand free members on my site. Yeah, be careful. Be careful what you ask for because yeah. like, how, are why, gonna, how are you going to how are you going to keep up again doing everybody's uh, you know, right? But if you offer the I'll do it if you upgrade to the next level, then then both parties are getting something. That that's when when. Right. Yeah. People's mind they, they like to feel that they're that they're being fair, right. you know. 
that they're being equitable and both parties should be getting something in the deal. And if a guy is just, well, I just want what I can get for free. I'm not going to build a long-term relationship with that person. Exactly. Right now. So there's all kinds of ways to skin a cat. And, and of course I'm going to experiment as I go through this, you know, I'm going to start, I'm going to think it through, start what I think is going to be a good offer and see what kind of response I get and just tailor it with, at the end of every week, look and see, see, I'll be able to talk to people and see what kind of resistance I'm getting. Mm -hmm. Why don't you want to do this? Oh, it's just because I want you to upgrade to the next level. And then I'll flat out ask him, what do I need to do to get you to upgrade to the next level? Yeah. What do you need? What do you want? Right. I'm and then you just answer, you fill in those, all those gaps or what the, um, I guess, stoppages are in their mind and then you solve them. And then now that's, those. That's when you throw in, well, instead of me giving you the $97 one time concierge service, I'm going to give you the 197 year long concierge service where I update your listing every month. You just have to keep adding until they say yes. Mm -hmm. you Speaking know. of ad keep adding until they say yes, I'm going to now uh, roll into my uh, the video on the Beacon software there for you guys. Um, oops, that's not what I wanted. Let me try that again. Uh, I'm going to upload the slides again. Here's your last 20 slides here, Frank, that I know you were asking for. There we go. All right, so now I'm, I'm going to do a live demo for everybody on this as well so they can uh, see how it works. Again, there's other tools out there. This is the one that uh, that we provide a solution for, but it's called Beacon, uh, and it does all those five things that we were talking about uh, automatically. So I'm just going to kind of walk through the steps of what it can do. And so uh, what Beacon does is uh, it walks you through the lead magnet creation process basically from start to finish. So uh, at the beginning, uh, you're going to be asked uh, what lead magnet format you want. And if everybody can, uh, I think somebody's on the microphone there. If, if we can uh, like, uh, meet everybody else. There we go. Can you guys still hear me? Good. All right. Um, so, um, what, what, uh, what the a beacon does is basically, uh, walks you through those steps and it's going to ask you what type of uh, lead magnet, uh, format that you want. And so you have, uh, uh, a few to choose from here, you know, ebook, resource guide, checklist, workbook, email templates, and that video lookbook. These are kind of all the ones that we went over, uh, earlier. Uh, and the ebooks are obviously, uh, the most popular. So we'll just pick that for uh, the demo today and kind of walk over that. And so, uh, for the ebook, uh, what, uh, Beacon includes a lot of time-saving tricks. Uh, for example, uh, instead of writing your ebook from scratch, you can actually recycle a blog post that you probably already have on your directory or, or already written somewhere uh, and just import them straight into Beacon. And all you have to do is enter the, the email address uh, or web address of the blog content and Beacon automatically fetches that content and adds it to your ebook. So you don't have to do anything. If it's already created somewhere, it can pull that in there and kind of automatically start creating that ebook for you. Uh, next, you're going to choose a template uh, for how your e uh, lead magnet looks. We already talked about that. You're going to have to do this on your own if you do it yourself. This already has pre-built uh, templates. There's dozens of uh, professionally designed templates that you just choose from, and they're all customizable in terms of the wording, the color, the images, and everything. So you know, don't worry if you can't find exactly what you want. Uh, you can just choose one that's generally close and then uh, that you had in mind and then change it uh, to, to look like your niche or your colors, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but it just uh, allows you to pick a template and kind of run with that. And a lot of them may be good, good enough for what you're trying to do just to get your foot in the door. You don't have to change anything other than the text and you may be good to go. So this is the main uh, beacon editor, and this is where you, you, you can make customizations to your lead magnet. And so we'll just have to take a quick tour through this on the right hand side. Uh, you see that there, there's a preview of, of the lead magnet. So that's just kind of the cover. And on the left-hand side, you see a list of all the different pages that are included in your your, your ebook. And again, it's all templated. It's not only the cover, it's the actual content inside of that. So it has all these pre-made template stuff, of the intro, the about the author, the call to action, and the, the end page already in there. All you have to do is kind of cut and paste or add the content or maneuver stuff around and you're good to go. Uh, since this is an uh, ebook, obviously it comes loaded with all those pages you expect. And then um, 
the at the bottom uh you can see that that's the 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 blog content that they imported at the bottom there just kind of adds it to the bottom and you can drag and drop that uh wherever you want in your ebook content um and then as you can see that the content uh so it kind of went to this imported blog page here it's already imported the content it's got the title it's got the image from the blog it's got all the blog contents and the styling so uh, it, the headlines are still headlines and the lists are all preserved and the fonts and colors aren't going to be exactly like you had in, in the blog, but you can just change all those. Again, it's usually towards the template, whatever you picked, styled to that and you can make it whatever you want. Um, and they're all consistent across the ebook and if you change one, it kind of changes them consistently through that uh, to give you that that constant uh, look and feel for the ebook that you're you're trying to provide. And then if we look at a different page, you see that everything's customizable. So you just click on an item and then the controls come up on the left to change it. You can change the text color, the size, the font type. Uh, and it, it wasn't uh, it wasn't made for designers. So it's, it's you know, or it was made for designers. So it's uh, really easy to use, right? You, you're going to find, you're not going to find a lot of complicated features. It just works. It's just what you'd expect to, to be there and like not any extra frilly stuff that, that gets you confused. Um, so a good example here is the, the drag and drop section. Let's say you want an image uh, on a page. You literally just click the image button there, drag it over to where you want it, and then it adds in there. And then you just click uh, to upload it. And then you can just drag and drop, resize it, or move it around on the page. And it really is that simple. So it's kind of uh, just very easy to do. Uh, so if you're happy uh, you know, with the content uh, in your lead magnet and how it looks uh, and you're ready to share it with the world, one of the one of the big problems uh, we talked about earlier that uh, once you have your lead lead magnet right they don't know what to do with it it's a complicated process it's like a eight step uh, you know uh, BD directory thing in order to get done a workaround um, but how do you get that lead magnet on your website so you can start collecting the leads and so this is where Beacon uh, really has a big advantage over hiring somebody else or doing some other kind of process because it it basically takes care of the rest of the process for you so you literally just click the publish button at the top of the screen. Uh, and it uh, sets it up uh, for publishing. So you have a few different options. You can just grab the PDF version and download the PDF, um, or you can make an opt-in form or put it on your website. So we're, we're gonna uh, do that as an example, and I'll show you a couple different examples of the link lock and the inline form and horizontal bar. That's kind of what Lisa was talking about earlier, where it's up at the top. Uh, it has a bunch of other stuff built in uh, for that. And so, uh, we'll just pick on the, the content upgrade. And so, uh, you'll then be taken to a new screen where you can set up your opt-in form. And again, everything's templated out. So you don't have to design this. You don't have to make it. You literally say, I like that one. Let's use that one. And again, it's all customizable later in terms of background image, uh, text and all that stuff. Uh, but these are all different styles for the content upgrade. And there's a few different options. Again, you just go with the one, uh, that yellow box is the one that, uh, that they used for the example at the beginning of the presentation today. Uh, so let's say you click on that uh, as your option. And again, then you just uh, customize it. So there's a bunch of steps on here, but it kind of walks you through all those. And you're basically creating that content uh, upgrade. And so if you look at this top bar up here, uh, where it goes one through uh, publish there, you can see all the different stages that a user will go through when they opt in for your lead magnet. So first, they'll see this trigger on your page and it's just another call to action, right? And so you can click on headline paragraph, the button color, the container color and layout. You can change all that stuff here and that's what the uh, the button will look like, like on your website. The next uh, tab when you go over is the pop-up. And this is what the actual pop-up will look like. So you can change again, the headline, uh, the paragraph, the form, the button container, all that stuff can be customized on there uh, for the actual pop-up. The next page, um, after they enter the details, this is the thank you page that they'll, they'll get after they get sent the ebook. And again, you can change all the look and content of the uh, the post landing page that you want after they get the ebook. And then uh, you also, it walks you through the emails. You can change in all the email and opt-in settings. You can change the from address, reply to, the content of the actual email uh, gets all done here. And this can be customized per lead automatically uh, set up for that particular uh, pop-up. So very, uh, very easy and user-friendly. Um, the uh, the next uh, piece there, um, and I'm, I'm not gonna walk through every every one of these, uh, it's pretty straightforward, but there's also a section in here uh, in the pop-up where you can pick uh, options. So you can do a 3D book image, you can do uh, different, uh, you know, 
picture examples to get that uh, that call to action picture exactly what you want. And again, Beacon handles that all automatically, so you don't have to have a, a find a designer to do that for you. And then finally, once you're happy with all that opt-in thing, you get to the publish a page and the opt-in form, and it literally gives you a script um, that you copy and paste. So uh, I'm going to show you a couple of BD examples on my page uh, in, in a second here. Uh, but literally, you just uh, pop that script in to whatever BD web page that you want. Um, I, I find it easier just to add it to a widget. So I add it to a you know a custom Beacon Demo inline form example widget here, uh, and then just paste that anywhere in your uh, page content, and that form will automatically be there, and it just adds it from the system. So let me, um, I'll show you that live here in a second on what that looks like, but that's as, as simple a, as it is. So here's what it looks like on my page. Um, that you know thing that we designed there with the embedded content with the the name and email. Send me the ebook. It has the picture of it, like we already said, and it just embeds it right there in the middle of the content wherever you, wherever you want it. Um, here's another example of the. Uh, this is the actual uh, you know pop ups. Maybe you don't have it inline. Maybe it's a pop up that shows up after 30 seconds on that page, and that pops up. And there's the example of that stuff we just configured there as a pop up. Uh, on the screen and they'll get that instead. And so um, I think uh, I kind of walked through all the advantages here, but uh, the beacon advantages, uh, it gives you more control. Uh, it's more cost effective. You can knock them out. You can you know, crank out the eBooks a little bit better. It's all integrated in one piece of software, and, you know, not three or four separate things. And then uh, I think I already mentioned this in the other part of the video, but the other advantage of that beacon is that it actually, um, enrolls that email directly into the email marketing uh, software that you have. So you don't have, you can start sending those autoresponders or start sending that other content um, right away. So let me just go ahead and uh, use a, um, a screen share here real quick and I'll show you what it looks like live on, on my site. If you guys go to directorytoolkit.com, you guys can just go to the beacon here in the newest products. You just go to view all if it doesn't show up on there, but you can just view that. And this is the product uh, that uh, we're offering today and is live for everybody to to, to get if they uh, want to use the system. Um, I'll, list, I'll preface this right now. Um, you guys can go look at the site. Uh, they're charging $49 a month for the pro pricing. We can get that to you uh, for uh, almost half the cost. $30 a month is what we're offering for. All you have to do is hit purchase now if you're interested. Uh, so you can avail yourself of that if you're interested. But um, if you guys scroll down, this is all the content we kind of already talked about. If you guys go to the lead capture here, uh, there's a couple different examples. This link lock demo, it basically goes to another page um, with the, uh, the content. And what it does is it puts, I've already, I kind of already screwed this up for the demo, but it puts that little pop-up on there and it kind of shows the PDF in the background, uh, but it puts that lead magnet uh, piece over top. So as soon as they add their email and hit uh, get the ebook, it then goes away and they instantly have access to uh, the ebook. So it kind of shows them what they have in the background. They add their info and they immediately have that. Uh, here's an inline demo uh, here for the other example that I showed you, it's just kind of in the content. You guys can see that live demo. And then here's the pop-up delay demo, again, where it loads the pop-up screen. Um, and then when we get down to the bottom or after a little bit, it pops up with the uh, the get the free ebook uh, example on, on the directory. So there's a couple uh, different uh, live examples uh, of that. And right. yeah, good. Was that? Sorry. Sorry, go ahead. Say that again. Is it just made to be viewed online or you can also download it? And if so, was that the download page? Uh, yes. So you have the option of, uh, sorry, let me get back to my screen here. Um, you have the option of on, the, on this page, you can have it um, downloadable or not. So you notice um, I don't have the... There's no download button here. I can't, yeah, that's, that's I can't, why, yeah. I can't save it. Um, but it, what it would basically do is you have a, it's called a smart PDF. And so it'll actually have like a download thing over here and it has some other options that you can do. Uh, if it's just the form value, it, it just sends the, the PDF uh, to their email. They click on it and get the, get it from their email. And Ryan, are you able to utilize this on more than one website or does it cost more if you're using it on a variety of websites? 
Um, that's a that's a great question. Um, I I think it's unlimited. Uh, it's unlimited websites. It's wherever you add the script, right? So um, okay. the, the only thing it does have custom domain name, so you can you can you know put it on one custom dom domain name, but uh, you can embed those where wherever you want. As long as it has that script, it's gonna it pull it from the system. Okay. So let let me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to demo uh, how uh, easy this is to uh, to use the system, um, and I'm just going to make an ebook uh, for for everybody uh, here live, and I'm just going to walk through the the demo. I kind of already showed you what the the demo uh, looks like in terms of the um, the, the content and uh or that example lead book i already kind of made it and i'm just going to show you how easy it is to make it and you guys can ask questions as i'm doing this i'm just going to kind of walk you through the system so i'm going to create a new lead magnet i already talked about that uh on how to do that uh let's say i want to do a uh let's do an ebook and do people like to recycle blog content yes i want to do that and you can use hubspot it integrates into there you can just click other and you simply uh, add some blog posts in there. So I'm just going to, as a demo, I'm just going to use some Brian directories, uh, blogs, just as an example, just to kind of show you guys how this works. And I just want, again, you can use any blogs you want. I'm just going to use these. So I just added these two in there. They're about lead uh, generating stuff that, that BD has. Just you can add as many as you want. And uh, then you just hit create publication. And it, again, it will automatically pull in that data for you. Uh, next is that, that template we've already talked about. I'm gonna use this one, Digital Marketing Playbook, kind of looks like lead magnet to money. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that one. And again, um, you can uh, do whatever do whatever you want to, to call it. We've already, I'm just gonna label it as the magnet name of the title for today's webinar. And you just hit create lead magnet. Now it's automatically going to pull all that content in there. We've already talked about all the uh, pages it's automatically going to make. And so here's all the stuff we talked about. And then there's the two blogs that I imported. They kind of added it at the middle. Um, I'm just know I want the call to action at the last thing anyway. So I'm going to pull that to the end. And then we'll kind of show you how to do this. So um, again, it already kind of put some template stuff in there. It says your company, you know, name presents. So I'm just going to change this to, um, you know, brilliant directory blog to so you know what it is. And I'm going to, you know, retitle it how we talked about the same title as the, as the thing here, how to craft your, your customer can't ignore and again so you can change the font size color and all that stuff i'm just going to leave that as is so there's my cover obviously you can spend as much time as you want on that uh to to design it and that uh that looks pretty good uh table of content box cover page introduction about the author quote um let's say well, i'm going to go to the quote i don't necessarily want a, a quote on here uh let's say i don't want to get that page so again all you have to do is hit uh, the trash hit delete and then that that page goes away and you, you know, you may have to edit the table of contents. I'm going to get rid of that as well. It's not going to be that big of an ebook. So I don't want to do that. And so we'll start off with the introduction. Um, so again, you don't, you can, you can add as much content as you want in here. So I'm just going to say, um, you know, this is a demo ebook we created on a director webinar. You can watch today to see how simple it is to uh, make an ebook uh, can be. And I'm just going to leave this as is. It's basically saying reading an entire book can seem like a big task. This, yeah, obviously, you would edit this to whatever you want. And uh, and then you add your name. Again, you can, you can design this however you want. I'm just going to add my name. And I'm going to put uh, you know, owner directory toolkit.com. And then uh, we'll, we'll call that good. There's my intro page. And then we can go about the author. That's not me, obviously. Uh, I'm going to get rid of that as well. Nobody cares about me. I'm just going to, I just want content in this thing. So now, now we go to the turn your uh, membership or membership website in the lead generating machine. So it already pulled the image. And here's all the content from their, uh, their blog. You see, obviously, it doesn't necessarily line it up. So you may have to play with it a little bit to, you know, to try to, to get the content. Uh, on the next page just so that lines up you know maybe you want that bold so you just highlight that again just edit this on the fly just make it look nice you can spend as much time as you want on here but that again it pulls it right from the blog and looks pretty good on the content uh right right there i'm just going to highlight all of these 
things and that that's good enough for me uh, for now. Uh, and then it has, obviously it pulls in all the stuff on here. It has their little elevator pitch for brilliant directories. I just don't need that. That's just all Twitter content at the bottom of their blog. So that's not required for my ebook. So there we go. Uh, there's one blog right there. It looks pretty good. It has all the content. And I'm going to go back. I'm going to do the same thing for uh, the second ebook. And again, it doesn't take that long to do it. Uh, if, it if it's cleaner content on there, uh, join free webcast. I don't want that. So let's delete that. And again, I'm going to highlight uh, the, the categories here just to make you stand out. But again, you can add as much stuff as you want, um, change it as much as you want, but it's not it's not Gucci. It's not that complicated. There's the, the second ebook right there. Um, let's say we want a, 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 video, a video page. So... Um, Sorry, we can go to the uh, go to the content, and uh, let's say um, we wanted to add a. You can add an uh, image, a divider, all that stuff. We kind of already talked about that. Let's say we want to add a new page, and and again, this is all templated too. So let's say we want to add a video page. It, all these things are kind of pre-made, and you can just drag and drop and change. So it has columns, all the quotes, the cover half sheets. Uh, checklists are already done. Let's say I want to add a video and I want to do a video box like that. You literally just click on that. Let's say I want that before the call to action, drag and drop it up here. Now I have a video box that I can add um, and change in here. So um, I'm going to use again, a lead magnet from Brilliant Directories for their video. I'm just going to put in the, uh, I guess they want the YouTube, sorry, not the link to the thing. So let me, so you would just post in any any YouTube video you want there, and there we go. There's there's that content. Um, sorry, let me do that again. So there's their brand directory video, and then this is just uh, it's just expert tips or whatever. So we'll just add that in there from the again from the website um, for le learning the profitable stuff, and let's say lead. Lead magnet video is what we want there. And so this is that easy to, to, to make the page. And you can you can add as many types of content as you want. And that's the page. And then we'll just finish it off uh, with a you know call to action. Uh, you can literally just change the image out like that. Um, let's say we want to switch it out with my directory toolkit image. And let's say change the width so a little bit bigger. And let's change this to visit, you know, directory toolkit. I want to center that up. And then I'll just put a little topic here, advice and tips. All right. So that's it. And then obviously you can click here for the button. Uh, you can say hire us today and then say directory toolkit.com. That's it. So now there's our ebook. Uh, I just literally, we just made that and I don't know how many minutes that was. We're, we're good. You can kind of browse through uh, all the different stuff that you want and say you're good. You can go to a preview uh, and kind of see how, how it's looking there. You can kind of scroll through uh, what it looks like. Looks like that wasn't centered, so I can change that. But, you know, you can scroll through here and I just, we just made this ebook uh, with the content that we wanted. And that looks good. And you literally just hit publish. Um, and now, now we can go through, we can download the email, we can do that uh, on say the link lock, like we were saying, and then we just say use link lock. And then it goes into all those uh, those different settings that we just talked about. Uh, and now you go into the opt-in form. So we'll say demo form. And I won't go through all these steps. I already kind of walked it, walked it through, but let's say we want to, want to do this one. This is the one I used before. So you literally just click it. And then now you can, you know, change, uh, unlock this resource to unlock this ebook, right? Um, let's say you wanted to say ebook instead of resource. Okay. Um, so all, all of these elements are configurable. Uh, you can change the button color and say, I don't like the button thing. That's not my uh, thing. I want to, you know, blue like that. So you go through all that, change the confirmation. I can change my email integrations, all the other stuff. Um, I have this uh, hooked up to uh, 
my SunFox account. So here's the beacon. I, that's my email uh, list. And I'm going to add them to the beacon subscription list. And now when they sign up for that form, it's automatically going to uh, get them in that subscriber list. And then you hit publish and that's it. Um, turn it to activate. It's activated. And now um, I can, now I can share that link uh, with the audience and that's my link lock. I can go to the straight to that. URL and, and and my lead magnet is all set up for that email we just made. So, so in about about ten minutes there, I just made my ebook. It pulled in blog data. I changed the data real quick, and I just made a new downloadable uh, lead magnet for my site. Kind of did all five of those steps that we talked about on the webinar in about ten minutes. So, any questions? And that has like an email integration. So when those emails come into there, can they go into your constant contact or whatever yes. form? Okay. Yeah, I only and got so one we, word for that. What's that? So I only got one word for that. <laughs> What's that? Wow. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it's, Im it's impressive. So yeah, it has a. It ha I think it does some web books. It doesn't have all of them. Uh, it has. Uh, I don't know if it has constant contact. In, in fact, uh, oh, in a Weber. Oh, there it is. A Weber. It's, got it's got most of it in there. In fact, I guess constant contact is one of the ones it doesn't have. It, it has all these built-in integrations, but it has Zapier as well. So that can that can link into uh, right. your constant, constant contact. contact. Yeah. Well, the cool. beauty of this thing is, I mean, look, there's a lot of decent ebook makers on the market. Most of them are, you know, much more expensive than this and much more tedious to work with and although i really like the, how easy it is to put an ebook together the the real beauty of this thing is what happens after you're done the book <laughs> well and and that's the whole point right a lot of times um and that's why i said the bd workaround is is good right you make a page add a contact form it's got all that right but it doesn't have the the next piece like you're talking about there right right um, no that that's i mean that's amazing well, and aesthetically too. I mean, you know, because you know, I can you import your own covers? Do you know, or can you um, start, can you start with a blank cover and just bring in all your own images? Or you could probably take any. Well, cover you get it close and enough, and you just change the image, right? Yeah, you could probably just open any one and take all the images off and put yours on. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So you uh, you know you change the background image. Let's say. Um, you know, or if you have it, right. see, I, you know, obviously you'd have a higher resolution photo, but you could take a, you could take a screenshot of that cover and just bring that in complete. Yeah, exactly. Image. Yeah. That's beautiful. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I can use like Canva and stuff, which is free to make eBooks, but then this, this is the, the point is the whole publishing aspect and all of the different types of forms and ways you can display it for people. Right. Really and I good. haven't, I haven't done Canva on there too, but I mean, obviously it's, it's just as easy in, you know, so again, whatever you guys, whatever you wanted to do, it's already there. Let's say it's a, um, you know, checklist. that's great. That's yeah, I don't think it has all those kinds of templates where I can just be like, Oh, let me pop in. I mean, yeah, when you, yeah, when you're using yeah. Canva, it has to cover such a wide range of things you want to do. Yeah. You know, rather than having something that's just dedicated to doing one thing well. Exactly. Right. Yeah, that's really good. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, thank you. So yeah, again, you know, it has some cool stuff too. Like there's a quote page, right? Or it right. just has a Yeah. And that's a no brainer at that price. If you're if, like anything else, if you're going to use it, you know. Right. Exactly. But you should be. <laughs> See, now I'm ready to sing a whole different tune. I love making PDF. <laughs> Bring them on. <laughs> because all I think about is how much work is involved, you know? Yeah, that's simple. Day as it is. All right. Well, I have the, uh, so as always, I've got those down. If you go to my, the directory toolkit and you go to that page for uh, Beacon, uh, go to one of those form demos or whatever. Fill out the uh, actually down, uh, sign up for the ebook to, to get that one we made live here. Uh, you can get that ebook, and then uh, uh, at the bottom of the ebook that's in there is a uh, is a discount code for uh, uh, it'll be a it'll be a surprise discount code, but it's a discount code for even cheaper 
lifetime discount for that beacon if you uh, if you use that code. So, but what about um, you can it last out. last week? I did all that stuff. Like I filled out the form that you gave us, and I did a testimonial on your website and all this kind of stuff. And I never got an email back to tell me anything about a discount code or something. So. I don't know if there was another piece that I didn't finish or if it just um, didn't work right with my email. It should have been on the page. It should have been on the actual page. Yeah. Huh? Like the, the last page when you filled it out. No. Um, just, just fill, I, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll just send you the code. If you, if you want to sign I, I don't know. I'll, I I'll it was for the, it did. It was for the forms or something like that. Yeah. I can't remember what it was. Yeah. Yeah, it was um, weird. Maybe I just didn't see it and closed the page or something. I thought I was going to get an email that told me it. So maybe that's my bad. <laughs> but what's the deal with like just grabbing people's blog posts and turning them into an ebook? Is that legitimate? I mean, should you really be doing that? Well, I mean, they mean it, you can grab it would, your, own it would blog be your blog post, right? From your yeah, website. You go to HubSpot, you're not grabbing yours. Well, if you if you logged into your HubSpot, it's your your stuff. Yeah, it's not right. HubSpot's blogs. It's your HubSpot account. Oh, okay. Because so it's got a native integration there where you can just kind of grab all of without having to copy and paste right. and stuff. Yeah. Is HubSpot free then? Oh no, it's not. Well, I mean, there's a free level of HubSpot. It's HubSpot's really good. Um, Patrick is always on here. Uh, he uses HubSpot all the time, but it, he'd be the first one to admit that it gets expensive pretty fast. If you have a lot of advertisers if you start using all the Gucci integrated stuff in HubSpot, but it does pretty good. But it's not it's not free by any means. I mean, it is for you know the, the small list or the enough to get you hooked. You know. Well, that was great. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah, hey, Ray, I had a question yeah. for you. I'm looking at joining your site, but I wasn't sure the distinction between like the different ones that you. No, I'm glad you. I'm glad you asked that question. I need to. <laughs> I I kind of put that up there. Try. I was gonna. What I was gonna do. Um. I need. I'll. I'll fix that today, Mark. I, okay. No I kind of. I kind of had it set up. I was gonna lock down the content for members or whatever. I just didn't have enough content. Uh, to do that, and so I kind of made it free to everybody. And I, I'll be totally honest; I forgot to uh, to change how I kind of had that set or was selling the site. So sure. that's how it's going to work in the future. Um, to uh, you know, I'll have some added content, some courses, and or after it's on the site for free for uh, you know uh, a couple of weeks, I'll, I'll move it back into the 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 the, the portal there for pay, everybody to get the archives or to to get access to the full stuff. We'll we'll kind of set up for a membership eventually, but. Um, cool. don't pay me there. There's not there, other, other than, uh, you know, getting on the webinars or, uh, just stuff. Uh, the only thing, I, what I'm probably going to do, uh, I think Hans did this for me. He, he was asking, I don't want to, you know, pay to post products or anything. I just want to donate to the cause or whatever. I actually have that, I think up at the top, it's like in yellow or something where you want to do the, the donor stuff. There's no, there's no real advantage of that. So if you want to, uh, to help out in that way, you can do that. But, um, there's no, there's no hidden treasure sites. It is all available for there uh, for for free if you just click around. So, okay, I appreciate that. I'll do that. I have a question about. Um, so I just changed all my levels and everything. What would you guys suggest about um, the members that I have as free currently? Like, am I able to just? Um, bulk move all of my free members to what my $29 basic membership is and put a coupon code in there so that they, you know, just, they never have to pay. It'll just be a coupon code recurring. Why wouldn't you just leave them in the free if they're not going to ever pay? Because I don't, I don't have that as a membership on there anymore. And so like, you know, it shows what membership you are. So it has a different name than the three that. Well, are I, I guess what he's saying was I'd probably make a, I just make a, I just clone the group that you're trying to move them into, right. just clone it and then make it free and move all those people into that, that free group at that level and call it good. But then they'd, they don't have, have they'd have the same. So make it the same name as the paid one, but make it free. 
Right. Let me. I'll, I'll just demo it for you real quick to show you how you do that for everybody. So, um, so just go to your your membership levels, or membership plans. And I'm just gonna do. Uh, this is the one Mark was talking about. So, um, let's say that. Uh, let's say supporter membership, right? So I, I got one person that's doing that for me. So let's say this was the uh, this was the paid account that I want to clone. Literally, just clone it. Right, it's going to make a, a copy of that. So now this is the, whatever plan you plan to upgrade them to. You now have a a copy of that. And now instead of it being paid, literally just go in there and uh, change it from paid to free. And now that's the only difference between your uh, your paid membership and this one is this one's free, the other one's not. Now um, you want to disable sign up, so that's not really available for anybody to, to buy into because you're you're it's kind of a one off freebie thing. And then go back to your uh, back to your things just to verify. Now I've got a supporter membership that's paid, and I got a copy of supporter membership that's free um, that nobody can uh, sign up into. I I can only move them there from the admin side. And so now now what you want to do is just go find those people and search members, whoever those people are from the original group. Um, find you know find that membership plan. Let's say I want to move everybody from the upload test group to the supporter membership group, right? You go to the upload test group, uh, find everybody in here, and then all you're going to do is click everybody like I showed you earlier. Click at, click that and, and select everybody, and then just membership plan uh, move them, and then you just select the that new free a clone plan that you did. They're all going to move into there, have all the privileges, exact same thing as the other plan, uh, but they're free. And and you don't have to add coupon codes. They're never going to be charged, uh, but they have the exact same level as the, as the paid membership. Great. And can the name be the exact same thing though? Cause you know, like people's, the, the, the name of their thing shows up on their, yeah, but I would use that as a marketing opportunity. I, I don't. I, I want them to know they're on a uh, uh, like a free one. That I've I've given them something. So I would I'd call it the 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 charter charter supporter group free. You know, it's sort of like, well, I'm a I'm in the charter group for free. Well, I, thank you. Yeah, I mean, but then on their on their listing, when it shows up on their listing, like, can other people see that that says? a different name than the current listing that's there it shows up in their admin i don't think it does it show what let me let me i'll have to look here like, a listing does it does it show a group there like i don't know that they're paying for premium like when you click into one of those um no i don't i don't think you ever know Oh, and, and, and now that you're on there, by the way, because I, I put something in for you to look at, all of a sudden, where it says overview, all of yeah. those tabs disappear. It is killing me. I don't I don't know why they did this. So um, somebody else had this on theirs, and it was black, right? Or um, actually, so they for some reason they added this uh, this background tab. I don't I don't know why. Actually, this is the first time I've seen that. Uh, why that's well, looking like that. All the tabs no. used to just be like that because there was no color back. And that was just like a day ago or two days ago. And I'm like, what the yeah, hell? Yeah, so they added this. And so for everybody watching, this is this is basically the same color module in the admin as uh, this outline for the module. I'll show everybody where that's at uh, to, to get rid of it or change it. But realize if you, if you change the – let me – sorry, let me go back to your site – if you change this color, it's going to change your border color because that's what it's what it's using. So let me go back to uh, admin. Go to my other site to do this. Don't you want it to be white, which would give you white invisible borders? Well, normally, I, I guess they're trying. There, there's been a lot of talk where everybody's like, "Oh, hey, nobody nobody notices that there's tabs here." Like, I don't. I and I think you've actually said this before. Like, how do I? they don't notice that there's photo albums or products on here. They just totally miss the tabs. And so I think they heard everybody saying that. And they're like, fine, we'll, we'll make that color. Did your eyes go straight to that? And now that everybody knows there's tabs. Um, no, that's but, but you don't know you there's any them. tabs there. Now you can't see them at all. Well, I know. I, I, I haven't seen that. I'll have to look and see what's causing that. But 
and that may be a glitch, but um, I don't know why they did that. And this is what I, I I think we had talked about before. I wish they release in the weekly instead of waiting a month or the webinar every two weeks to say, hey, oh by the way, uh, we just did these five things so everybody knows, and you can you can adjust fires. But um, in the settings, design settings, if that's if you go in there on the color the main color uh, tab here. Wait for it to come up. Yeah, the unfortunate thing is I just changed all those outlines and I want them green, but I need those tabs to show up. So I'm not going to change my border color. I mean, that's bizarre. <laughs> well, I, I know. I don't I don't know why it uses uh, the same thing. So right here, it is the module border color. It's in the additional design settings, module border color. And so mine's, mine's gray. So I'm just going to, I'll show you what that, I haven't looked at mine since that, that just started yesterday. So let me see what mine looks like. But that's that's what that color is. But again, if you change that, if you change that gray um, to another, you know, another color, it's going to change the border as well. So my border is gray. So you may just want to consider what that looks like. But yeah, and so now, um, so what? What? So this is this is the problem with yours. Your your text, one of your text settings. I'll have to figure out which one that is. The text color is the same color as your border right. color. So it's, it's having the, the border color and the text is the same color and it just acts like it's not there and you only see the, the hover over. So um, we'll have to change that text color as well. Okay, or, or the border color to the dark green, okay. They should but, really have it so that the tab that you're on is a different color than all the other tabs. That's the way that's done. Well, that's the way it was until they just changed this yesterday <laughs> without telling anybody about it, which is not good. Yeah, I, no, I don't like the look of that either. To be honest. Same day too. Yeah, I mean, if anything, there should be another color uh, where you pick the 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 active tab right. color and the right. inactive tab color. Exactly. Right? That's standard. But, so that's that's the uh, that's the problem though. So um, double check your text, and I don't know which text that is. So it's blue. So it's it's probably the price. Uh, I don't know. I don't know which blue. I'm gonna have to experiment with that. It may just be. It may be your primary. I just like I just changed my primary outline. button background. I think no, that's not it. That's the background. I changed my background color to black. And so now it shows up. You can see all those tabs, but I'll probably change it to dark green and it'll be fine because yeah. I, I want my writing to be the, the light color. So, right. But I'll have to figure out which one that is. So tell people of what color that is. I'm trying to, trying to find it's, it's obviously the text. Uh, I think it's the body. I think it's, link the, I think it's module text, uh, module font color. No, it's not because no. mine's black and mine showed up as blue. So it's the it's the body link color because those are actually. Um, let me just go to to black on mine real quick. See if that's what it is. Okay, I changed my background color to the dark green, and then that worked. Yep, that's what it is. See how that went black. So. Um, which again, it's always confusing because now these are in totally two separate areas. So it's module bo uh, border color and your body link color is the text. <laughs> so I was fine with the blue, I'll go back to that, but, um, but that's what it is. Well, most people's sites are based on two colors. So the active tab should be one color of your site and the inactive tabs, the other. Like mine yeah. is purple and green. That's how I'd like them to be in the tabs. Did you say BD something here recently? Yeah, yesterday yeah. they changed this. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So double check all that for you guys. Made it better. Well, you should look at yours. You should look at your weekends. Are always crappy. Why do I always have bad weekends? Everything's good up until the weekend. I'm just <laughs> Frank, you should look at yours because now that if if your writing was one of those two colors, then your tabs are going to look weird too. Yeah, 
Uh, let me see. Let's look at it. Cross your fingers, Frank. We'll see how this looks. There we go. What would what would the day be without one disaster? <laughs> Uh, go to Parish. Oh, that's right. You don't have any tabs on that one. Hold on. Yours actually looks fairly good. Yeah. Well done, Frank. Well done. Oh, yeah. yeah but you do it that way. It's hiding the fact that the secondary tabs don't exist. Yeah, because you don't have an outline color on anything. Everything's gray. Right. I'm not thrilled with that. I yeah, just wait a week. I want the purple, the purple and the green. Then I'll be happy. Because then with either of those, the white text will work. Right. Well, you do a green outline, then you'll have purple writing on a green background there. Well, that won't work. Well, so, it you just have to play with it and see yeah, what's the best. It be any uglier, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a weird thing they did, but you know. Well, I love my little grapes in my map. I just think that's so cool. <laughs> uh, grapes are our vinelands. That's our city. Favicon. Yeah, but they're not really grapes. It's a wild vine from Japan that's taken over the countryside. Yeah. <laughs> Frank, did I tell you I'm from Jersey too? Where at? I'm from Heightstown, like. Oh, really? Yeah, near near Princeton. Yeah, I used to go to Heightstown for the motorcycle races years ago. Okay. They had a great flat track there. Yep. Yeah, they were great. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording. Uh, thank you, everybody watching in uh, TV land there, and everybody here. Um, thank you, and I uh, hope you join us uh, for next week's uh, webinar. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, you guys can stay on. I was just stopping.